All right, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And that's in John 8, 12. This first image that you see is the coat of arms of Norway. Norway is a country in Northern Europe and Norway, Sweden, and Denmark were the countries of the Vikings. So turn your King James Bibles to the book of Jeremiah. We're going to read chapter 51. Something real quick. The Assyrian Empire came and took northern Israel. Uh, Israel separated themselves from Judah. And after the death of King Solomon, taxes became very high and they asked Solomon's son to lower their taxes. And he said, nope, I'm not going to lower your taxes. I'm going to make them even more. So the northern tribes of Israel said, nope, ain't going to happen. And they separated themselves, sort of like the Civil War in America. Only the, uh, the South, uh, well, they didn't win, they didn't lose. But the northern tribes of Israel were carried off captive by the Assyrians. God got extremely angry with them. And in Jeremiah 3, 8, chapter 3 and verse 8, Jeremiah, God divorced Israel, but not the southern kingdom of Judah because of his promise to King David that he would always have a king to reign upon the throne. Well, Christ came from David. So, at least his flesh did. Uh, Jesus is called the root and offspring of David. Think about that, the root and offspring of David. In Revelation 22, 16, Jesus says, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. So, how could Jesus be the root and the offspring of David? Real simple. He, Jesus was the one that created everything. Read John 1. John, the book of John, the gospel of John, chapter 1. So he was the root of David, but he's also uh, through the line of David. So, all right. So, here, that's our background. Now, Assyria took northern Israel captive. Well, then the Babylonians came and took Judah, the southern kingdom of Judah, captive. And I'm covering a, basically in a few minutes what would be hours and hours of studies. If you want, you can read the book of Kings. You can read the book of Jeremiah. And that'll give you the, the information of what I'm just kind of glancing out through. So Babylon took southern Israel. Judah captive. And then after 70 years, God promised that Judah would return to the land. They would rebuild Jerusalem. You could read about that in the book of Daniel. You could read about that in the book of Ezra and in the book of Nehemiah. And if memory serves me correctly, Nehemiah was the king and then Ezra was the priest during the time period of the rebuilding. And the Medes and the Persians were the ones that destroyed Babylon. So the modern day Persians are the Iranians. They showed true Judah much kindness, allowed them to take the gold and silver and all the furniture of the, the uh, temple and allowed them to go back to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple. So they showed great kindness. But the uh, modern day Chazars, the synagogue of Satan, as Jesus says in Revelation 2.9, if you're really interested, read Revelation 2, 
in verse 9 and Revelation chapter 3 in verse 9. And you'll know what's in the land today. All right, so let's go to Jeremiah chapter 51 and start from the beginning. Verse 1. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will rise up against Babylon, and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me a destroying wind. Now, Babylon is probably in the same area as the Tower of Bab Babel, Babel that you read about in Genesis. I hope you've read it. And when you read about Babylon, mystery Babylon in the book of Revelation, uh, you know, you can read the book of Daniel and it kind of explains some things. But Babylon was full of Satanism, and God used this to punish Judah for their wickedness. And Jeremiah couldn't understand that very well. You know, he's like, yeah, we're pretty bad. Us, Judah, we're pretty bad, but Babylon's even worse. Well, yeah, um, that's the Bob translation, by the way. But uh, God used the satanic heathen nation of Babylon to punish Judah. But now God is judging Judah. And if you want to know why, you could read the last couple chapters of the book of Daniel. When Nebuchadnezzar's son um, was mocking the God of the Bible by drinking out of the cups taken from the temple. Then you heard the writing on the wall, the hand that wrote on the wall. Yeah judgment against him. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will rise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me a destroying wind, and will send unto Babylon fanners that shall fan her. Well, what do you do when you want to start a big fire? You, you fan it, right? You give it oxygen. And shall empty her land, for in the day of trouble they shall be against her round about. Against her that bendeth, let the archer bend his bow, and against him that lifteth himself up in his brigadine, and spare ye not her young men, destroy ye utterly all her host. Thus the slain shall fall in the land of the Chaldeans, and they that are thrust through in her streets. Um, the Chaldeans were one of the main parts of the Babylonians. And when it's talking about thrusting through, I mean, you're talking about taking a sword and sticking it, you know, through their belly. Verse 5. For Israel hath not been forsaken, nor Judah of his God, of the Lord of hosts. Though their land was filled with sin, though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. And that's Christ, uh, that's Christ, and that's God the Father, right? Flee out of the midst of Babylon, and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render, render under her a recompense. This is called payback, okay? Verse 7, listen to this. Babylon hath been a golden cup, in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. And when it says they're mad, it doesn't mean they're angry. It means they're insane. You know, the cup of Babylon, you want to read about that? You can go to the book of Revelation. Read about Mystery Babylon. You know, uh, King Solomon said that in the Proverbs, I think it was in the Proverbs, he said there's nothing new under the sun. And if you want to know the future in the Bible, read the past. Because the Old Testament symbolisms give you the ability to decipher the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation takes all of its symbolism from the Old Testament. Okay? I mean, really, it does. 
Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. Drunken with what? Drunken with spiritual wickedness, right? The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore the nations are mad. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. Howl for her. Take balm for her pain. If so be, she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let us go and let us go everyone into his own country for her judgment reacheth unto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies. The Lord hath brought forth our righteousness. Come and let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our God. Make bright the arrows, gather the shields, the Lord hath raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes. Uh, the Medes and the Persians were similar people. Maybe they just lived in a different province, you know. I don't know. Um, the Lord hath raised up the spirit of the king of the Medes for his devices against Babylon to destroy it, because it is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance of his temple. Set up the standard upon the walls of Babylon. Make the watch strong. Set up the watchmen. Prepare the ambushes, for the Lord hath both devised and done that which he spake against the inhabitants of Babylon. O thou that dwellest upon many waters, abundant in treasures, thine end is come, and the measure of thy covetousness. The Lord of hosts hath sworn by himself. <laughs> That's like... God saying, I swear to God. Think about that for a minute. God saying, I swear to God. I swear to the Lord. <laughs> Think about it. The Lord of hosts have sworn by himself. So God swears to God. Boy, I, I don't know. Saying, surely I will fill thee with men as with caterpillars, and they shall lift up a shout against thee. He hath made the earth by his power, he hath established the world by his wisdom, and hath stretched out the heaven by his understanding. When he uttereth his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he causeth the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings with rain, and bringeth forth the wind out of his treasures. For every man is brutish by his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graven image. For his, for his molten image is falsehood, and there is no breath in them. Uh, an image is basically an idol. Okay. 18. They are vanity. Vanity means worthless. They are vanity, the work of errors. In the time of their visitation, they shall perish. The portion of Jacob, and who was Jacob? Jacob's name was changed by God to Israel. The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the former of all things, and Israel, Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. Listen carefully. Now, we're talking about Jacob. We're talking about Israel. And Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. Thou art my battle axe. And we're talking about Israel. Thou art, God saying, thou art my battle axe. Israel is. Thou art my battle axe. And weapons of war. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations. And with thee will I destroy kingdoms. Now we're going to go back to this. I'm going to finish reading the entire chapter. And we're going to go back to this. And with thee will I break in pieces the horse and his rider. And with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his riders. With thee also will I break in pieces man and woman. And with thee will I break in pieces old and young. And with thee will I break in pieces the young man and the maid. I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd and his flock, and with thee 
will I break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke of oxen, and with thee I will break in pieces captains and rulers. And I will render unto Babylon and all the inhabitants of Chaldea all their evil that they have done in Zion in your sight, saith the Lord. Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, saith the Lord, which destroyest all the earth. And I will stretch out mine hand upon thee and roll thee down from the rocks and will make thee a burnt mountain. And they shall not take of thee a stone for a corner, nor a corner for foundations, but thou shalt be desolate forever, saith the Lord. Set ye up a standard in the land, blow the trumpet among the nations, prepare the nations against her, call together against her the kingdoms of Ararat, Mini, and Ashinaz. Appoint a captain against her, cause, cause the horses to come up as the rough caterpillars. Prepare against her the nations of the king of the Medes, the captains thereof, and all the rulers thereof, and all the lands of his dominion. And the land shall tremble in sorrow, for every purpose of the Lord shall be performed against Babylon, to make the land of Babylon a desolation without an inhabitant. The, men, the mighty men of Babylon have forborne to fight, they have remained in their holds, they have fa uh, their might hath failed. They became as women. They have burned they have burned her dwelling places, her bars are broken. One post shall run to meet another, and one messenger to meet another, to show the king of Babylon that his city is taken at one end, and that the passages are stopped, and the reeds have they burned with fire, and the men of war are affrighted. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, the daughter of Babylon is like a threshing floor. It is time to thresh her, yet a little while, and the time of her harvest shall come. Uh, when's the time of her harvest? Spiritually, at the end, like just like the uh, book of Revelation, right? Verse 34. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, hath devoured me. He hath crushed me. He hath made me an empty vessel. He hath swallowed me up like a dragon. He hath filled his belly with my delicacies. He hath cast me out. The violence done to me and to my flesh be upon Babylon. Shall the inhabitant of Zion say, And my blood upon the inhabitants of Chaldea shall Jerusalem, shall Jerusalem say, For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will please thy cause and take vengeance for thee, and I will dry up her sea and make her springs dry. And Babylon shall become heaps. Have you ever seen a garbage heap? A dwelling place for dragons. An astonishment and an hissing without an inhabit inhabitant. They shall roar together like lions. They shall yell as lions whelps. In their heat I will make their feasts, and I will make them drunken, that they may rejoice and sleep a perpetual sleep, and not wake, saith the Lord. What's a perpetual sleep? Death, I guess, right? I will bring them I will bring them down like lambs to the slaughter, like rams with he goats. How is she shock taken? And how is the praise of the whole earth surprised? How has become how is Babylon become an astonishment among the nations? The sea has come upon Babylon. She is covered with the multitude of the waves thereof. Her cities are a desolation, a dry land and a wilderness, a land where no man dwelleth, neither doth any son of man pass thereby. And I will punish Bel in Babylon. Bel was a type of satanic god that they worshipped in Babylon. Uh, and I will bring forth out of his mouth that which he hath swallowed up, and the nations shall not flow together any more unto him. Yea, the wall of Babylon shall fall. And that's what happened to Babylon. The uh, Medes and the Persians took a river that flowed into Babylon against the walls, and they stopped it up. And when it finally broke like a dam... The wall of water hit the walls of Babylon and just collapsed. 
And uh, the Medes and the Persians just poured in and slaughtered everybody. So, the wall of Babylon shall fall. My people, go ye out of the midst of her, and deliver ye every man his soul from the fierce anger of the Lord. And lest your heart faint, you fear for the rumor that shall be heard in the land. A rumor shall both come one year, and after that in another year shall come a rumor, and violence in the land, rumor, ruler against ruler. Therefore, behold, the days come that I will do judgment, and upon the graven images of Babylon and her whole land shall be confounded, and all her slain shall fall in the midst of her. Then the heaven and the earth and all that is therein shall sing for Babylon, for the spoilers shall come unto her from the north, saith the Lord. As Babylon hath caused the slain of Israel to fall, so at Babylon shall fall the slain of all the earth. Ye that escape the sword, go away, stand not still, remember the Lord afar off, and let Jerusalem come into your mind. We are confounded because we have heard reproach. Shame hath covered our faces, for strangers have come into the sanctuaries of the Lord's house. And that was the Babylonians. They, they went into the temple. Verse 52. Wherefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will do judgment upon her graven images, and through all her land the wounded shall groan. Though, ba though Babylon should mount up to heaven, and though she would fortify the height of her strength, yet for me shall spoilers come unto her, saith the Lord. A sound of a cry cometh from Babylon, and great destruction from the land of the Chaldeans. Because the Lord hath spoiled Babylon and destroyed out of her the great voice, when her waves do roar like great waters, a noise of their voice is uttered. Because the spoiler has come upon her, even upon Babylon, and her mighty men are taken, every one of their bows is broken, for the Lord God of recompenses shall surely requite. And I will make drunk her princes and her wise men, her captains and her rulers and her mighty men, and they shall sleep a perpetual sleep and not wake, saith the king, whose name is the Lord of hosts. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the broad walls of Babylon shall be utterly broken, and her high gates shall be burned with fire, and the people shall labor in vain, and the folk in the fire, and they shall be weary. The word which Jeremiah the prophet commanded Sariah, the son of Neriah, the son of Mazaliah, when he went to Zedekiah, the king of Judah, into Babylon in the fourth year of his reign, and this Sariah was a quiet prince. So Jeremiah wrote in a book all the evil that should come upon Babylon, even all these words that were written against Babylon. And Jeremiah said to Sir, Sariah, When thou comest to Babylon, and shalt see, and shall read all these words, then shalt thou say, O Lord, thou hast spoken against this place to cut it off, that none shall remain in it, neither man nor beast, but that it shall be desolate forever. And it shall be, when thou hast made an end of reading this book, that thou shalt bind a stone to it, and cast it into the midst of Euphrates. Euphrates was a river. It's a, um, and thou shalt say, Thus shall Babylon sink, and shall, shall not rise from the evil that I will bring upon her, and they shall be weary. Thus far are the words of Jeremiah. All right, let's go back. All right, let's go to back to Revel. Uh, I'm sorry, Jeremiah 51, verse 19. Now remember, the subject is is Jacob Israel. The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the former of all things, and Israel, Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of Hosts is his name. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. All right, let's talk about that. What group of people have carried the battle axe? Certainly not the South Americans or the, um, you know, uh, South, the Americas never carried a battle axe. And yeah, I know they'll say that the Indians had tomahawks, but you know where they got that from? The English. Africa? No. They might have had spears, 
but they never had a battle axe. Battle axes are made with metallurgy. Africa's never had metallurgy until the uh, Europeans went there. What about Asia? Well, Asia had arrows. Uh, like Japan, they had swords. But who carried battle axes? Europe. Europeans did. Especially the Vikings, the Saxons, the Normans. Uh, they were the ones that, you know, the battle axe. And think about it. God said it to Israel, Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations. And with thee will I destroy kingdoms. And what did the Europeans do? They took their battle axe and their weapons of war and they conquered. They conquered China. They conquered Australia. They've conquered South America. They conquered what present day Mexico. They conquered the Indians in the Americas. They conquered, basically conquered the world. And guess what? And now... All these nations are being told to hate Israel for doing what God said he was going to have them do. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. With thee will I break in pieces the nations. What nations? The heathen nations. And with thee will I destroy kingdoms. Guess what? The Incans, the Mayans, the Aztecs destroyed the Zulus were destroyed in Africa. Um, you know, America conquered Japan and China, all these places. I mean, we've rebuilt them and let them come back. But, I mean, let's face it, Europe conquered the world at one time or another. And they're the only group of people that ever carried the battle axe. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war, with, for with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee I will destroy kingdoms. Well, guess what, people? We have done just what God said we would do. But now, because of our wickedness, we're facing the same end that Israel did under the Assyrians, and Judah did under the Babylonians. And guess what? Just like in uh, Revelation, mystery, Babylon the Great, a new captivity is coming because of the wickedness. So uh, you better not be lifted up in pride, but rather be on your knees in repentance. Because wickedness is coming, people. Judgment for wickedness. And you think things are bad now. They're going to get even worse. I, I've, I, can't, I can't even believe the changes I've seen since I was a little kid. I'm in my early 60s. And let me tell you something. Uh, when I was young, America was like, well, go watch a rerun of Leave it to Beaver or... Andy Griffin show or Mayberry RFD or something like that. That's what America was like back then. That's now it's uh, becoming like a nightmare. It's becoming like a horror show and it's just getting started. Stay close to God, people stay close to Jesus because things are going to get even worse. The ride and all the churches think they're going to fly away out of here in the pre-trib rapture. Oh, well, they're going to be they're going to be surprised when they're left behind. All right. Well, all blessings, praise, glory and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world in Jesus precious name. Amen.